Hey, what's up everybody? Ben here from blogwithben.com. And in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through the entire process of creating a WordPress recipe blog post using OpenAI's ChatGPT in MidJourney. And these new technologies have taken the world by storm, but they've also presented an opportunity for bloggers like you and me to enhance our creativity and be much more efficient with our content. And for those who might not know, ChatGPT is a highly advanced artificial intelligence language model that can create human-like text, and it's like having a virtual assistant who's always ready to generate content with you. Meanwhile, MidJourney is a generative artificial intelligence program that allows you to create stunning images from natural language text descriptions. And in this video, I'll take you through the whole process from understanding and setting up ChatGPT and MidJourney to crafting a mouth-watering recipe blog post on WordPress. By the end of the tutorial, you'll not only have a new blog post, but you'll know how to leverage AI to enhance your content creation process. Now, real quick, before we get started, if you get any value from this tutorial, I would greatly appreciate it if you would like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Blog With Ben YouTube channel. Doing so helps me keep this channel going and growing, and it also allows you to stay up to date with all of the AI and WordPress trends that are happening throughout the year. But either way, thank you so much for all your support. All right, with that being said, Let's get started. So as I mentioned in the intro, we're gonna be using two machine learning tools to create our recipe blog post. ChatGPT for the written content and MidJourney for the visuals. And I'll link to all of these tools in the video description below, but you can get started with ChatGPT for free by visiting the OpenAI homepage, which is what you're looking at right now and then click the sign up button in the upper right corner of the screen. And it's a pretty straightforward process. You'll basically just create an account with them and then you'll have access to ChatGPT 3.5. Now, we'll be using ChatGPT 4 in this video, which you have to pay for, but you could still get by with the free version of ChatGPT in this tutorial. Then when it comes to the visuals for the blog post, we're gonna rely on MidJourney. It's a groundbreaking AI tool that generates original high quality images from text descriptions. And this one is a bit more involved when it comes to getting started because as of June 2023, it can only be accessed by Discord. So you'll need a Discord account in order to connect to MidJourney. And if you're brand new to all of this, I highly recommend that you check out their quick start guide and you can access it here at the MidJourney homepage by clicking the get started button in the bottom left corner of the screen. And just a heads up, MidJourney isn't free. You'll need to subscribe to a monthly plan in order to use it, and they have different tiers, but the cheapest one is only $8 per month. But if you're on a budget or just starting your culinary blogging journey, Adobe Firefly serves as a great alternative. It's a free tool that also uses AI technology to generate images from text descriptions, so if you don't have the budget to add a new tool to your digital toolbox, Adobe Firefly is a great alternative to MidJourney. I know I threw a lot at you right there, and if this is brand new to you, please don't feel overwhelmed. Once you get the hang of this, you're gonna be a pro in no time. Plus, I have some step-by-step -step tutorials on how to get started with Adobe Firefly and MidJourney that you could access on the Blog with Ben YouTube channel. And I'll be sure to link to these tutorials in the video description below, but feel free to check them out whenever you have some extra time. They'll walk you through the sign-up process all the way to using this new technology to create stunning visuals for your WordPress blog or website. Then finally, we'll be putting this all together on the WordPress.org blogging platform using the Kale WordPress theme. You obviously don't have to use this particular theme, and I realize that the content we're gonna create can be used on different blogging platforms. However, we will be using a very specific WordPress plugin called WP Recipe Maker. And this free plugin will give us the ability to create the recipe layout that you're looking at right now. Again, it's free, but it only works with WordPress.org, just FYI. So those are the tools we'll be using in order to create our AI enhanced recipe blog post. And I'll link to all of these resources in the video description below, but let's move on and use ChatGPT as our innovative culinary writing assistant. In this portion of the tutorial, we're gonna leverage ChatGPT to create our recipe blog post. So after you create your free account and sign in, this is what the ChatGPT chatbot interface looks like. Now, I realize that there may be some of you out there that are against using AI for blog content, and I get it, but I want to emphasize that I don't condone just copying and pasting what ChatGPT outputs onto your blog post. 
While ChatGPT is powerful, it's not perfect, and you should review the output carefully. Make sure the recipe makes sense, the instructions are clear, and the measurements and cooking times are reasonable. So be sure to edit the text as needed to make sure it meets your standards and fits your blog style. Heck, even try the recipe out yourself before putting it on your blog. Either way, I'm a huge advocate and fan of ChatGPT, but use it responsibly. Okay, with that being said, let's create our recipe. So as I mentioned in the intro, we'll be using ChatGPT4 for this video. This is the paid version of ChatGPT, but as I also stated in the intro, you can still get by and create some great content with ChatGPT 3.5, which is the free version. So the first step in this process is that you obviously want to decide on the type of recipe you want to create. This could be anything from a traditional Italian pasta dish to an exotic Thai curry or healthy vegan dessert. And once you have a dish in mind, you need to formulate a prompt that ChatGPT can understand and respond to. And this could be as simple as write a recipe for a traditional Italian pasta dish. However, the more specific your prompt is, the better the output from ChatGPT will be. And to create your prompt, simply begin typing in the field provided towards the bottom of the screen. And for this example, I'm going to ask ChatGPT to help me write a blog post recipe for chicken marsala. And this is where I get more specific in my prompt, and this is very important. I also ask it to include ingredients, serving size, prep time, cook time, and total time. Then the most important part, in my opinion, is that I also ask it to write in the tone of an Italian food blogger. Now, if you're not an Italian food blogger, simply replace that part of the prompt with a request that matches the tone of your blog. Maybe you're a stay-at-home chef or a city-dwelling vegan. Whatever your niche and brand are, try to incorporate them into your prompt so that ChatGPT can match your style of writing. And real quick, this is just a personal preference, but I always ask the AI to help me write, and I also say please and thank you. OpenAI says those things don't matter, but I just like the interaction when it's more polite. Okay, once you have your prompt, go ahead and feed it to ChatGPT by clicking that little purple icon or just click enter on your keyboard and watch the magic happen. It usually takes a few seconds, but as the bot gets going, the generated text will typically include a title for the recipe, a list of ingredients, and detailed step-by-step -step cooking instructions. And depending on the prompt, it might also include an introduction to the dish, serving suggestions, and nutrition information. Again, you can always tweak the prompt and add to it to fit your specific needs. And check that out. We have our Italian food bloggers recipe blog post for classic chicken marsala. Now, if you're not satisfied with the response, you can always click the regenerate response button at the bottom of the screen and ChatGPT will give you an alternate version of the recipe. However, I like this recipe, but I'm not too crazy about the title. So check this out. The AI knows that we are currently talking about this blog post recipe. So instead of starting a new chat, we can stay within our conversation with this chat bot and ask it to tweak the title. So staying in the current chat within the message field, I'm gonna ask it to provide some other options for a blog post title. And just like that, it knows we're talking about a chicken marsala recipe and it produces these additional titles to choose from. That's really cool. Usually takes less than 30 seconds for it to do its thing, so we'll just sit tight really quick while it gives us some alternative titles. And there we go. I definitely like these and I'm gonna be using one of them for the blog post, so let's keep going. All right, so taking a closer look at what ChatGPT generated for the recipe, the content structure is pretty impressive. As you can see, it gave us some great intro content before the recipe, and as far as I can tell, it looks and sounds like it's using the tone of an Italian food blogger. Now, one complaint, or maybe I shouldn't say complaint, but maybe a hesitation when it comes to using AI machine learning to generate content is that it's exactly that, content generated by a machine. Additionally, if your content reads like it was entirely produced by AI, it may affect how search engines rank it. But if you recall, we asked ChatGPT to output our content using a specific tone. And due to this, it added a human element to the content. And to prove this, let's test it out with an AI detector. So I'm gonna highlight the text I wanna review, and then I'll copy it. I'm pressing Command-C on my keyboard to copy it. I'm using a Mac. And then I'll head over to an AI content detector for ChatGPT and full transparency. I just Googled AI detector and this was the first thing that popped up and I'll link to it in the video description below. But from the reviews I've read and from just using it, I believe this is pretty accurate. 
Now it is limited to only 1500 characters at a time, so that's why I'm doing this in chunks, but all you'll do is paste your text in that text box and then click the analyze text button at the bottom of the screen. And in a few seconds, it'll give you a score and check that out. Our chat GPT content is viewed as being 100% human generated content. Then let's test the rest of the content. So back at chat GPT, I'm gonna grab the remaining paragraphs at the bottom of the post. Then we'll head back to the AI detector and follow the same steps as before. And once again, our chat GPT content is viewed as being 100% human generated content. Now I'm not advocating that you just copy and paste your content from ChatGPT into WordPress, but I wanted to show you that these language models are super advanced and with the right tweaks to your prompts, you can get some pretty impressive results that sound just like you and me. It's insane if you think about it, but it's the world we live in and from what I've seen, it will only get more advanced. So you might as well adapt and leverage the technology to your advantage. So with that being said, now that we have the content for our recipe post, Let's move on and create some stunning food photography to go along with it. In this portion of the tutorial, we're gonna use Midjourney to create our visuals to accompany the recipe. And as I mentioned in the intro, Midjourney requires a paid subscription. So if you're on a budget, you can use Adobe Firefly for free instead. But either way, I have step-by-step -step tutorials that show you how to get started with both of these new resources that you can access on the Blog with Ben YouTube channel. And I'll link to them in the video description below. But as I mentioned, we'll be using Midjourney, which is accessed via the Midjourney Discord server. And it's what you're looking at right now. The idea behind this tool is pretty simple. Anytime you wanna create an image, you'll do so through the message field located at the bottom of the screen. And the way it works essentially is that you'll input a prompt that consists of a command, description text, and parameters. Then to create an image, you'll use the imagine command. So within the message field, to enter a command, you'll start with a forward slash, followed by your command, and we wanna use the imagine command, so type the word imagine, and press enter on your keyboard, and then the prompt is ready for the descriptive text. So within the text box, you'll enter a short descriptive text phrase that the Midjourney bot will then interpret to produce an image. And since we're creating a recipe blog post about chicken marsala, and I'm needing a featured image for that post, I will make this prompt say, professional food photography of chicken marsala, rustic kitchen, depth of field, no red sauce, followed by an aspect ratio parameter of 16 by nine, and then an other version parameter of 5.1. Now, if you're brand new to Midjourney, this may seem confusing and I'm sure you may have some questions, but I go into much greater detail about how to create prompts, their commands, and the parameters in my YouTube tutorials. So check those out and you'll be a pro in no time. All right, now that we have our prompt, click enter on your keyboard to send it to Midjourney and the AI goes to work. Now, when you first send your prompt through, it'll take a few seconds to start. As you can see, your prompt is waiting here within the channel to start, but once it gets going, which usually takes a few seconds, You'll notice that it's kind of blurry, but the quality of the images are directly aligned with the percentage of completion listed here. And the closer we get to 100%, the better quality of image the AI generates. Then once it reaches 100%, which usually only takes 60 seconds or so, and let me speed through this really quick, the image will be posted at the front of the message thread and will be in full resolution. Now, one really cool thing about Midjourney is that it gives you four variations of your prompt. You can take a closer look at them by clicking on the image itself within the channel, and this enlarges the image grid, allowing you to take a closer look at what's been generated. How cool is that? And the quality of these images never cease to amaze me. I love playing around with Midjourney to create images. It's pretty addictive and fun once you get used to how everything works. Okay, so I like the first image within this image grid. Each image is represented by a number one through four shown here. Then to separate one of the images from the group, you'll use the upscale feature. This separates and enlarges an image of your choice. And all you'll do is click the U1 through four buttons and you can enlarge any of these images within the grid. So I'm gonna use image number one for the blog post. So let's click the U1 button. And in a few short moments, we'll have an enlarged version of that image separated from the grid that we can now download and use for the blog post. Now I could tweak this image even more in Midjourney, but for the sake of time, we'll go with this version. So to download it, click on it, and then right click on the image, then select Save Image As, 
and I'll rename the file and save it to my computer. And perfect, we now have our featured image. How cool is that? Okay, next I'm gonna create images for each step within the recipe. This is when things get interesting and fun. So if we head back to chat GPT and review the recipe, what I'm gonna do is essentially create visuals for each step in the instructions. Now, you'll obviously take some liberties with the prompt in Midjourney because if you copied and pasted the exact recipe instruction into Midjourney, the image would more than likely come out pretty strange. However, you can get creative and take the most important parts of each instruction and use that for your prompt. For example, the first step in this recipe calls for you to start by seasoning your chicken breasts with salt and pepper, then dredging them in flour and shake off the excess. So instead of just copying this directly from ChatGPT, Let's head back to mid-journey, and this time in the message field, I'll start with my imagine command, and then the prompt will be raw chicken breast, seasoned with salt and pepper, dredged in flour, with the version parameter of 5.1. Then we'll send it to mid-journey, and watch it do its thing. Remember, it takes about 60 seconds for the image to generate, but for the sake of time, I'll fast forward through this really quick. And check that out, we have our AI generated images of the prompt. However, this time they are square shaped, AKA the one by one aspect ratio. And this is the default size of the images in mid journey if you don't determine the aspect ratio in your prompt. They'll always generate squared shaped images, just FYI. Okay, so taking a closer look at the image grid, they look great, but I think I like this one the best, image number three. So let's upscale this one so that we can use it on the blog. Click the U3 button. Give it a few additional seconds to generate. And there we go. Then I'm gonna skip saving this to my computer for the sake of time, but you'd obviously wanna save this image to use later in the blog post. And speaking of that, if we head back to ChatGPT, we have additional steps within the recipe, all of which still need images. At least that's how I'm creating this blog post. I wanna have visuals for each step of this recipe. So instead of making you sit through me crafting each prompt, let's fast forward again. And as you can see, I use the main parts of each instruction in the recipe to create a prompt in Midjourney, which in turn created these awesome visuals outlining each step in the chicken marsala recipe. This literally took me about five minutes and I'm pretty satisfied with the results. Now, you can choose to use AI or take photographs yourself, but the quality and accuracy of Midjourney was pretty impressive and saved me a ton of time. All right, now that we have our recipe post and visuals ready, it's time to put them together in our WordPress blog. So with that being said, let's move on and create our authentic chicken marsala recipe blog post. What you're looking at right now is my wordpress.org dashboard for my food blog. And for this particular example, we'll be using the free version of the Kale WordPress theme. This is what I use in my food blog tutorials and it has proven to be one of the best food blog themes out there for WordPress users, in my opinion. And if you're interested, I've linked to it in the video description below. Now, if you're not using it, no worries. These steps to create the blog post will work on pretty much any WordPress theme. I just wanted to make clear what theme I was using in this video. Next, in order to create the recipe and make it look super professional, we'll be using a free WordPress theme called WP Recipe Maker. This is probably the best plugin out there for WordPress food blogs when it comes to recipes. I've used this for years and love its interface and simplicity. Highly recommend it if you're sharing recipes on your blog. And I've linked to this in the video description as well. Okay, so back at WordPress, let's create our blog post. So from the WordPress dashboard, if you hover your mouse over the plus new icon and click on post and the toolbar at the top of the screen, this will take you to the block editor where you can begin to piece together the blog post content. Now, if you're watching this tutorial, I assume you already have your blog and you're somewhat familiar with how the WordPress block editor works. If not, I recommend checking out one of my how to start a blog tutorials on the blog within YouTube channel. There I give you a much more detailed explanation of how to use this and what everything does. But for now, we're gonna keep it pretty high level for the sake of time. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is add the title. And if we head back to ChatGPT, remember we asked it to produce some alternatives for the blog post title. It gave us 10 to choose from, and they're all pretty good. Again, I didn't specify keywords or character length in this prompt, but you could tweak it even more with ChatGPT if you want. But for this example, I'm gonna go with the first option. 
Sicilian Delights Authentic Chicken Marsala Recipe. So I'll highlight it and copy it. Again, I'm on a Mac, so I'm pressing Command C on my keyboard to copy it. Then let's head back to WordPress. And in the title field, I'll paste it like so. And there we go, we have our title. Next, it's time to add the content. And for this step, we're only adding the paragraphs. The recipe portion of the blog post will be handled by the WP Recipe Maker plugin. So with that being said, let's head back to ChatGPT. Then from here, I'm gonna grab the intro to our post. So just like our title, I'm gonna highlight the text and copy it. Then back at WordPress, place your cursor where it says type or choose a block and simply paste the text like so. And when you do that, WordPress automatically creates paragraph blocks using the text from ChatGPT. Pretty cool. Okay, next it's time to add the recipe portion of the blog post. As I mentioned a little bit ago, we're gonna use the WP Recipe Maker plugin to do that. So to get started, you'll need to add a new block to the post by clicking the plus icon here within the editor. And this will open a block pop-up menu where you can quickly search and find blocks to use. And one way to quickly find blocks is to use the search feature. Just type the letters WP in the search field and it should be the first one listed there. So go ahead and click on where it says WPRM recipe and this will add a new recipe block where we can begin the process of creating our chicken marsala recipe. So click the create new recipe button to get started and this will take you to the new and improved WP recipe builder. Now, if you look at the top of the screen, you'll notice that they've broken each part of the recipe into various sections. This helps to organize your content and it makes the process of adding a recipe super simple. And I know it may look like a lot at first, but once you get the hang of it, you'll be creating recipes left and right. Okay, the first thing I recommend adding is an image or video if you have one, but for this example, we're going to add an image. And this image is used within the recipe block at the upper right hand side of the recipe. It's not required to add one, but I think it looks nice and helps improve the overall user experience. So to add an image, click the select image button and this will bring you to your media library. I'm gonna upload a new image, so click the upload button and then select files. And then I'll find the image that I created in Midjourney. And there we go. Then after you add the image, I always recommend updating the alt text and title within the attachment details. And without getting too far into the weeds, the alt text is used for the search engine bots when they crawl your site and it allows them to read what the photo is since they can't actually see. So try to leave a brief description of what the image is. Then the title text is what people will see when they hover their mouse over the image. So I usually use the post insight title here. All right, so that's gonna do it for the image. So let's go ahead and click the select button to add it to the recipe. And there we go. Next, it's time to start filling out the rest of the recipe details. So the first section is the general info. This is where you'll name the recipe, add a quick summary, set the author, serving size, etc. And I'm keeping the recipe type as food recipe, but feel free to play around with the different types to see what works best for you. Okay, so we got most of our info from ChatGPT that we can input here, but I'm manually going to add the name and summary of the recipe. So in the name field, I'll type authentic chicken marsala. And for the summary, I'll add a quick little blurb. You could probably use ChatGPT for this, but I'm just gonna go ahead and enter it manually. Then I'm leaving the author at default, but I will update the servings and the times. Remember we asked ChatGPT to include that in our recipe, so let's head back to our AI writing assistant. And you'll see that we have a serving size of four with a prep time of 15 minutes, cooking time of 20, and a total time of 35 minutes. So back at our blog, it's pretty straightforward. Just input the content in the appropriate fields like so. Servings are four people, and the cook times are 15, 20, and 35. Now we didn't ask ChatGPT to produce an estimated cost for the recipe, but you can definitely do that with your recipe if you'd like. Okay, moving on to the category section. This is where you could set the recipe taxonomies like the courses, cuisines, and keywords. Keep in mind you're not limited to these defaults. You could type anything you want and press enter to confirm. Multiple terms can be added for each section, but I'm just gonna use the default terms for the courses and cuisines. So from the dropdown, just select what you want. The courses will be the main course and the cuisine will be Italian. 
Then for the keywords, I'm gonna type out a few here, but be sure to press enter on your keyboard to send it through and to add additional keywords. And there we go. All right, next is the equipment. Now, we didn't ask ChatGPT to specify the equipment needed for the recipe, but that is something you could absolutely ask and add to your prompt. But for the sake of time, I'm just gonna manually add it here. And again, pretty straightforward, just enter the appropriate content in each field like so. And this recipe really only uses one large nonstick skillet. Next, we have the ingredients. And this we can get from ChatGPT. So if we head back there, you'll see that the ingredients are nicely listed out one through nine. And this is what we'll input into the block within WordPress. And as you're doing this, you'll notice that you'll need to make some slight adjustments in how ChatGPT listed the ingredients and how you input them into the WP Recipe Maker. For example, the first ingredient calls for four boneless, skinless chicken breasts, about 1.5 pounds. Then, if we head back to WordPress, within the ingredients fields, you'll need to break it down by amount, unit, name, and notes, if there are any. So for our first ingredient, I'm gonna have it say four, and then we'll leave the units blank. Then the name will be boneless and skinless chicken breasts. And then I'll leave the notes blank. Again, I hope you're seeing that we aren't just relying solely on the AI to do everything. We're collaborating with it and making our edits and adjustments as we go. Pretty cool. Okay, now that we have our first ingredient, let's add another one by clicking the add ingredient button. And this will add new fields where we can input the next ingredient. And this one will be two tablespoons of olive oil. There we go. Then for the sake of time, I'm not gonna make you sit through me adding each individual ingredient, but once it's all filled out, it'll look like this. As you can see, we have all the ingredients with some notes added and it looks great. All right, let's move on to the instructions. And I forgot to mention that you could use these little tabs at the top of the plugin and clicking on them will take you to each section of the recipe maker so that you don't have to scroll back and forth all the time. Okay, now it's time to input the instructions. And this is an instance where we will copy and paste directly from ChatGPT. So let's head back there really quick. And all you'll do is find the instructions section of the recipe. And we have seven of them. And you'll just highlight each step one by one and copy and paste it into the recipe maker within WordPress. So starting with step number one, Back at WordPress, in the instructions section, I'll paste it in the field provided like so. Then if you recall, we created mid-journey visuals to accompany each step in the recipe. And to add an image, if you look towards the right of each instruction, you have a media section where you can add an image, video, and even some code. But we wanna add an image, so click that first icon of an image there. And this will bring you to your media library where just like before, I'm gonna upload my image from Midjourney that I created using the prompt from this particular recipe instruction. And I'm gonna go pretty fast through this to save some time, but once you've added the image, don't forget about the alt text and title. And then click the select button. And check that out. We have a professional visual accompanying the recipe instruction. This adds an element of professionalism and can enhance the user experience because who doesn't like visuals when they're trying to learn something? I know I do. I'm definitely a visual learner and the images help walk the user through the recipe. Plus they look great, as you'll see in a few moments when we publish this. Okay, so you'll obviously go through the same steps to add the additional instructions for the recipe one by one, but once they've all been added, it'll look something like this. We have each step neatly laid out with clear instructions and a professional image next to it. I love it. Now you may notice that there are some additional tabs here in the ingredients section. We have the metadata, associated ingredients, and inline ingredients. The metadata is automatically updated when you input an ingredient, but feel free to edit it as you see fit by clicking on that tab then we aren't adding any associated or inline ingredients for this example, but you could do so by clicking on either one of those tabs. Okay, moving on to the nutrition section. And now that we have all the ingredients and instructions, you can enter some nutritional facts by adding the calorie count for the recipe. Again, this can be something you ask ChatGPT to generate in your prompt, or if you know it, you could just manually add it here. And then finally below that, if you have any additional notes to add, you could do so through the recipe notes tab. And this gives you a text box where you can add some additional steps if you'd like. All right, now that our recipe is good to go, click the save and close button in the bottom right corner of the plugin. 
and check that out. The WP Recipe Maker plugin has taken our content and translated it into this awesome layout, giving it a unique but professional look and feel. Also enhancing the user experience at the same time. I'm a huge fan of this plugin and I hope you can see why. It looks great so far. Okay, let's keep going. We have a few more things to add to this post, one of them being the remaining content. So below the recipe, we'll add the rest of the text from ChatGPT. So go ahead and click the plus icon to add a new block. And since we're just adding text, we'll add the paragraph block. Then let's head back to ChatGPT. And once again, we're just gonna copy the last few paragraphs. So highlight it and click Command C on the keyboard to copy it. Then back at WordPress, place your cursor in the paragraph block and paste the content. Perfect, we are officially done with the blog content. Now, keep in mind that this is just a quick example. I highly recommend adding internal and external links to your posts, but this is a great start and will look really good once published. Okay, the next thing I wanna add is a featured image to the post. This is the image that visually represents either your blog post or page on social media. It's also the image that's above the content and recipe on this blog post. So to add the featured image on the right-hand side of the screen within the post settings, select the featured image tab and click the set featured image button. And this will take you to your media library where you can upload your new image or use an image from your gallery, which I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna use the same image we used for the recipe plugin. And this is one of the images that we created in Midjourney. So I'm gonna select the image and then click the set featured image button in the bottom right corner. And we now have our featured image. Then before we move on to the final two steps for this post, let's preview it so that we could take a look at what it'll look like once published. It's always a good idea to preview your content before making it live, and WordPress's preview feature is a great way to do that. So in the upper right corner of your WordPress editor, click on the preview button, and then select desktop and preview in new tab. And this will open a new browser tab in the preview environment, giving you an opportunity to see what the content will look like once published. And I highly recommend always previewing your work before publishing because as you can see, the content within the WordPress editor doesn't always translate exactly to the theme, meaning that how it looks on the back end of WordPress won't always look like that on the front end of WordPress. And this is due to the theme you're using and the CSS. So always preview your work to see if anything needs to be changed before publishing. And scrolling through our recipe post, I think it looks great. The content is laid out perfectly and the WP Recipe Maker adds a nice touch to how the recipe is presented. Okay, we're almost done. There are a few more finishing touches we need to take care of before we can officially publish this recipe. So let's head back to the WordPress editor. Then another thing you'll wanna get in the habit of doing when creating blog posts is to assign a category to each post. And if you're new to categories, a category is a group of related blog posts that are about similar subjects. Whenever you create a category, it makes it easier for people to find your content. So to assign a category to this post, within the post settings on the right-hand side of the screen, open the Categories tab. And by default, it'll be added to the uncategorized category, but you'll wanna either select the category you want the post to be assigned to, or create a new category here and add it but I already have the Italian category ready, so I'll check that box to select it. Then I'll uncheck the uncategorized category and close this up. Our category has been set. Finally, the last thing we wanna configure is the Yoast SEO settings for the post. And if you scroll down to the bottom of the editor, you'll see the Yoast settings if you've installed and activated the Yoast SEO plugin. If you don't have the plugin, then you won't see this, but I personally use and recommend the Yoast plugin to help optimize your blog's SEO. We won't do a deep dive on the Yoast settings, but I do have a much more in-depth video tutorial that walks you through everything you need to know about the plugin so that you can get the most out of it to enhance your site's search engine ranking. But in this tutorial, we'll just cover some of the basics here to get you started. Okay, the first thing I wanna configure is the post title. Yoast provides you with the Google Snippet Editor. This is where you can configure how the search engines see your snippet and the cool thing about this is that Yoast gives you a mobile and desktop preview of what the snippet will look like as you edit it. Then below the preview is where you can edit the snippet, including the SEO title. And by default, Yoast starts you off with what are called snippet variables of the title, dash separator followed by the actual site title. You can easily add or remove variables or you can remove them completely and just type out your new SEO title. And remember, this is only changing how your title looks in the search engines, not the actual title of your blog post. Then you'll probably notice the colored line moving below your title as you type. 
This feature helps you stay within the character limits set forth by Google and other search engines and lets you know when you should stop adding content to the snippet by turning green. Below that is the slug, and the slug is your permalink, so whatever comes after the .com of your post will show up here. And for this example, let's say I want to make the permalink more concise, so all you do is delete the words that you want to remove from the URL, and you now have a new slug. Finally, we have the meta description, which is the preview text that people will see when they search for your post on the search engines. Now keep in mind that Google suggests that your meta descriptions are between 150 and 160 characters, but your meta description should also use keywords and engaging text to entice the reader to click on the link and visit your post. Meta descriptions are extremely important to SEO and are a fundamental part of your blog post success. So one way to ensure that you're meeting those expectations is to use ChatGPT. For example, if we head back to our chicken marsala conversation that we're having with ChatGPT, I'm going to ask it to help me write a meta description for my chicken marsala recipe blog post. But I'll ask it to use the keywords chicken marsala and how to cook chicken marsala. There we go. Then we'll send it through ChatGPT. Then we get this great reply, but it's a bit too long. I forgot to specify the character limit. So staying in the same chat, I'll ask it to rephrase it to be 150 characters. And once again, ChatGPT goes to work, so we'll just give it a few seconds to let it do its thing. Perfect, much better, and it's using my desired keywords. So let me highlight and copy this text. Then we'll head back to the Yoast SEO plugin, and I'll paste it in the meta description box. Then Yoast is telling me that it's still too long by that orange line there, so let me make some quick edits to the text. I'll just remove some of the content from the meta description to lessen the character count. And then I'll also remove some of these quotations. Perfect, we have a green line indicating an acceptable character limit and our meta description is good to go. Now you may notice that we're still getting a bad mark for our SEO analysis. Yoast is telling me that it needs some improvement, but if you click on either one of those tabs, you'll get some recommendations from Yoast on how you can improve it. And all this post needs is some internal and external links added within the content. If this was a real post, I would definitely be linking to various articles and content within the post, but for the sake of time, we're just gonna move on. Okay, our AI enhanced recipe blog post is ready to be published. So when you're ready to take your post live for the world to see, within the upper right corner of the editor, click the publish button. And then depending on your settings, you may have to click the publish button again. And in a few quick moments, you'll get a notification letting you know that the post is live. Go ahead and click on either one of those view post links. And congratulations, you now have a professional looking food blog recipe post that was created with the help of AI. By combining the creative power of OpenAI's ChatGPT, the impressive functionalities of Midjourney, and the versatile platform that WordPress offers us, these tools open up new doors into content creation that seemed unimaginable just a few years ago. That being said, always remember the importance of human touch and creativity. These AI tools are here to assist us, to enhance our capabilities, not to replace us. As powerful as they are, they lack the unique human capacity for creative emotion and spontaneous inspiration. Use them wisely and they can be amazing tools for your growth and expression. And if you have any questions or wanna see more content like this, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. I'm always happy to help out. And if you enjoyed this tutorial and found it valuable, I'd greatly appreciate it if you'd give it a thumbs up and share it with someone else who you think may benefit from it. Thanks for watching and have fun with this new technology. So that's gonna do it for this video. If you found it helpful, I'd greatly appreciate it if you would like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Blog with Ben YouTube channel. Also, now that you have your WordPress site up and running, check out these two videos on email marketing and blog monetization. They'll show you everything you need to know step by step. And as always, your support means a great deal to me and my family. And for that, I thank you. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next video. And thanks for watching.